This video will discuss the uh, what's formerly known as Preactor, currently known as Op Center APS, and the different levels and versions that are available. So there are three levels of Op Center APS: the AS Standard, which is our entry level, the AS Professional Mid Tier, and the AS Ultimate. The requirements that are needed to do a model, a, a scheduling model for a particular industry, determines the kind of functions that are needed, and those functions fit which, which level is appropriate of those, um, those three lesson versions. So um, what I'm going to do is highlight the main differences between the three in the following slides. Um, they're going to show the fields and tables that are available in the out-of-the-box configuration. But as I go through it, just remember that the AS Ultimate, which is our top tier, has the ability to add unlimited fields, unlimited limited tables, and essentially every feature that is available in OpCenter APS, the AS Ultimate has access to that. So we'll walk through a few things. The first thing we'll do is take a look at, first of all, the products or the routings um, that are available in OpCenter APS. Basically, in the standard, you have typical fields, setup time, process time type, um, that can be time per item, rate per hour, batch time, for example, the times that it takes, and then one timing operation called slack time after last operation. So that basically means if, you're, if you've done an operation, you need to wait for a certain amount of time, we can highlight that and say, you know, we've done this operation, you must wait 30 minutes for the next one. The professional ultimate have the same fields with a lot of additions. Um, what we'll call these advanced timing techniques. There's the same slack time. But we also have slack time before the next operation. So that pushes, um, you know, puts a, a delay in there. We have maximum time before next op. An example of that would be if you're in the metals industry and you're heating something up, you have to, to go form it. Um, you can't let it heat it up and then wait for four hours. So you'd say max time before next op, say 10 minutes. So once you've heated it, the next job must start within 10 minutes. Um, the interval type is beginning of the job, end of the job, various details. Maximum operation span increase basically is a way to tell op center not to start a job before the end of shift if it can't be finished during that shift. We also have product multi productivity multiplier, which allows you to put basically two people on a job and have the job done in half the time. The attributes. Attributes in op center APS are things that you can use for um, scheduling or for just finding things or for colorizing things. In the standard version, we have three attribute tables. These are tables that you would actually assign a color to that you can use um, just visually or also for scheduling. Three attributes and for string attributes, some numerical ones and some dates and durations, etc. The professional and ultimate initially increase these out to five table attributes, five strings, five numericals, etc. So you get the idea, you get more with the professional and ultimate. Of course, with the ultimate, you can add even more to this table if you want to. Resources. Resources are our machines that we're going to schedule work on. Standard stuff in the standard, of course. Um, in the ultimate, you get some additional fields. Preferred sequence, for example, that is used in an APS rule. An example of preferred sequence would be um, if, you're, if you're manufacturing ink colors. You would want to go from a light colored ink to a dark colored ink before you went back to light so that you would minimize changeovers and cleanups and things like that. So it's a sequence that you can provide. And then we have a resource match field. So just some additional things um, that you get in the next version, which help with the way that you want to actually schedule. Um, again, on the resources and secondary constraints, secondary constraints can be anything from teams of people to items of tooling. In the standard, you are allowed to create one group of secondary constraints and allow Ops Center to pick from that one group. In the professional, you get an additional constraint group. And of course, in the ultimate version, you can have as many constraint, constraint groups as you care to create. Pegging rules. Pegging rules are the way that we allow Ops Center APS to um, peg or link to raw materials or to intermediate products. Um, it's part of the bill of materials information that we would bring in. In the standard version, you have one rule type, which is first in, first out. So when you are telling um, the system that this particular product needs a raw material or this particular operation needs a, um, an intermediate work order to be done, it will basically find the first one it finds. It will use the first one it finds. There's no limitation on that. 
when you get into the professional and the ultimate version, we have a lot more control over what is pegged to what. So rather than, for example, um, this assembly operation uh, for a bicycle needs a wheel. The ultimate, in the standard version, it'll find any wheel it wants. In the ultimate version or the professional version, you can say, I don't want any wheel, I want a specific wheel. And that could be specific based on a due date or a, a, um, uh, anything else that was required. You also notice that there's something called a user-defined rule type. This allows us to get very complex in the way that we allow the linking to occur. Um, if you have lot numbers, for example, and you only want the subcomponents to link to the same lot number of um, like initial raw materials, we can basically match on those kind of features. So it gives you a lot more control over how the linking between jobs in raw materials works. Um, the actual sequencing options that you have. In the standard version, you have forward sequencing by priority and due date. You've got backward sequencing by the same, you've got bi-directional sequencing by the same, and you've got an actually one rule that you can play with a little bit called set weight, where you can apply extra weighting criteria to certain parameters. Those are essentially the very basic rules. In the professional ultimate, you get APS rules. And advanced planning and scheduling rules are things like APS forwards and backwards. The difference between the forwards here and the forwards at standard is the standard job, standard um, forward sequence is job at a time when the standard, uh, the uh, ultimate version of APS forwards is operation at a time. And it essentially gives you a more compact, more efficient schedule. We also have things like parallel loading, preferred sequence again, which I mentioned, you know, if you're doing colors, you will have a specific sequence that you like to follow. And then there's even another rule called minimize overall setup, which basically throws out all concept of uh, due dates and just looks at what can I do to minimize the, the setup time and clean outs in my sequence. And there are a few others that are actually not in this list, but they're available in the professional and the ultimate. The other thing that the ultimate gives you is the ability to write your own scheduling algorithm or specify your own scheduling algorithm. So we will quite often customer uh, scheduling option will not fit in any one of these uh, specific rules. They have some specific ex um, requirements that don't fit in a rule that's already available. So we'll essentially write our own scheduling algorithm to take those into account. And you would need the ultimate for that. So bill of materials, all versions have the bill of materials. There's some caveats though. The AS standard can only peg to the first operation of a routing sequence. So even if, for example, a subcomponent was not needed till operation 40, the standard version is going to, is going to grab it in operation 10. It's the first operation. So that's a limitation of, of the uh, standard as far as pegging materials. Again, mention that we can only use FIFO as a pegging rule. And the standard has no visualization of the bomb. So essentially, you're limited to looking at reports, and shortage reports, to make sure that your actual pegging actually worked. The professional and ultimate, of course, has a visualization of that bill of materials. So visually, you can look at it and see if it's pegging the way you expect. You can actually double click and walk yourself up and down the bill of materials, traverse the bill of materials up and down by clicking on these jobs here. It's very useful to have that visualization. There is a, on our, available on our website, there is a highly detailed chart of every little feature. I only highlighted the main ones here, but every little feature is listed in that chart, which is available on our website. Um, if you have any more questions, please contact us and we'll help you decide um, you know, which one of these versions is more appropriate to your system.